These days, Wi-Fi seems as vital as water. We're helpless without the most powerful tool in human history, the internet. We can order clothes, coffee, and toilet paper with the click of a button. We can break news or hearts in an instant. We follow our friends. We troll our enemies. We listen to music for free. We watch TV on our phones. We date, we dine, we do it all online. Today, we'd literally be lost without the World Wide Web. Kids going to college now have never been alive without the internet. It's like running water to them, but everything was new once. Life before the internet was simpler, but not as exciting. I definitely remember the hard life before the internet of going to the store to rent a video or get cassette tapes, having to memorize phone numbers and writing down directions. When I would write stories in the 80s and we had to check facts, you had to find a book to figure out who was in what movie and how they spelled their name. You used to have to go to a library. That's crazy. So, how did we go from the insufferable world of letter writing, rotary phones, and mail order catalogs to clicking, pinging, and swiping our days away? As a kid, I used to think, I wonder what it's like growing up before the automobile. Well, I got to live through a similar transition before the internet and after the internet. Let's take a look back and see how the world got wired. Maybe it's no coincidence that the internet revolution began 50 years ago, at the height of another revolution. I, Richard Billhouse Nixon, do solemnly swear. All the elements are present for one of the most sensational murder trials in American history. Ever since I was a young boy, I've the silver ball. It was 1969. We raised our voices and fought for peace. Our heroes were a couple of bad guys named Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. And we made it all the way to the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And that same year, far from the streets of Washington and the fields of Woodstock, some brainy researchers in Los Angeles were trying to get two clunky computers to talk to each other. The strange world of the computers devised by engineers who feel that someday soon they'll design one that actually thinks like a man. In the 1960s, there were only a few really powerful computers in the world. These big universities, they had giant computers. I mean, we're talking room-sized that had to be cooled down. People were already doing plenty of computing. It's just that the computers didn't talk to each other yet. The internet was devised as a way of accessing computing resources at a distance. It was funded by the Department of Defense, something called ARPA, the Advanced Research Projects Agency. ARPANET was the original, original internet. The internet started out as a project run by the military, but it wasn't a military project. It was more like they were investing in the future of you know, infrastructure and research in the US. The original purpose was to share actual projects and for teams to be able to communicate between researchers at universities. UCLA was one of the very first that connected. On October 29, 1969, engineers at UCLA made history, sending the first message ever transmitted by a computer to their partners at Stanford. That message, L-O. They got two letters out, which is not quite Watson, come here, I need you. No, it was not supposed to be LOL, but rather log in. Apparently, five letters were three too many, and the system crashed. Still, the message had been received. This was the eureka moment of the information age, and soon, ARPANET was connecting computers around the country. We had a network. ARPANET started to open up from being just universities to being private companies, Boeing, Lockheed, Martin Marietta. The technology began to spread. But it was a new kind of message that would define this growing network, electronic mail. By the mid-70s, email accounted for 75% of all the traffic on ARPANET. Email was an ad hoc add-on. We just added it in. And suddenly, it dominated the traffic in the internet. As soon as email became a feature of the network in 1972, it instantly went from being this computing resources project to a communications technology. And it's really never gone back.